we apologize for that network interruption. And now I was saying the cosmetic industry is going at a rapid pace. The demand for all types of cosmetic products is ever increasing from varied sections of population. The demand for premium cosmetic is expanding everywhere, including the middle class of developing countries. And now joining us to discuss this is a professional, Blessing Kolawale, the CEO of Sycamore Cosmetics. Hello, Blessing, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Thanks for having me. All right, my pleasure. And now let's talk about the cosmetic industry. It's rapidly growing. Over the years, it wasn't be, it wasn't like this before, you know. Over the years, we've seen uh, a high demand for cosmetic products, and the demand, the supply, ever increasing demand. So, tell us about the business of cosmetics. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, cosmetics is um, basically skincare, taking care of your skin, taking care of your body. And over the years, it wasn't really, people didn't take it serious. Why? Because they just felt I could just, like our parents, they applied a deal, and then they were good to go. Probably because they were eating the right food then. Okay. But when people get to see that, even now that we have all this canned food, we have all these baked food everywhere, even our parents right now, the Adi and um, other stuff they were using are no longer working for them. Now, even those people that produced those products at that time, they were doing it in a very clean and, you know, they, they, they took it serious. You know, right now in Nigeria, people just want to make money. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm yes, sure. we can. Sure. Okay. So, they, don't, they no longer put like those good um, um, ingredients that they were adding before that made it perfect. So people just have to start looking for better options. How do I make my skin clear? What do I do? And then we start having all these other good products coming in and somebody trying it. And, you know, someone will just say, oh, wow, I like your skin. And then people start to, you know, give reviews. This is what I'm using. This is what I'm using. That's just how it just became global. Everybody wants to look good. Everybody everybody wants a skin where you don't need to have a makeup on and then you still look very presentable. Nobody wants to go around with pimples, acne, all over the place. Everybody wants to look good. Everybody likes to look good. People like to be commended. Yeah. Yeah, me too. It can go on, I'm with you. So, uh, okay. So from then, people started to study. People started to ask questions. What's going on? Some people they discover that during um, when it's close to like female, when it's close to their period and all that, they start to develop pimples, acne, and this is really not good. So people started to read about it, and that's how cosmetics became. You know, in in the world generally, and so we have we have products, we have moisturizers, we have sunscreen, we have serums, we have we have products for dry skin, we have yeah. products for normal skin, we have products for oily skin. So I don't know if you have any other question. Okay, um, for for the cosmetics, um, you know, industry, one of the challenges in recent times is the fact that um, those who make the organic products, you know. Um, there, there are talks that they make use of concentrated ingredients that sometimes has an adverse effect on the skin. So the question will be, um, for those who deal in organic products, um, how do they go about, you know, ensuring that they ration the ingredients so that it doesn't have an adverse effect on, you know, the skins of um, the clients? Okay. For me personally, I don't do organic. Why? Because I'm not even trained for that. I don't even know anything about it. Some of these people, they just go to go online, go on YouTube, and they just browse on products that, on things that you can add up to make, the, they call it glow. But at the end of the day, you're getting fairer. Okay. And that is not in. Most of these people doing this organic stuff, they, they don't know what they're doing. They're, they're just based on copy and paste what they saw online. And initially, when you use it, you tend to start getting fairer. Your skin is mm -hmm. getting better. But after a while, 
you will start having simple phone bone. This part of your face will be so dark. You will start having acne. And one thing about skincare, it doesn't start immediately. Okay. If you're using all drugs, at first you will just be shining and all that. But after like two, three years, it will have damaged the skin. People don't know that everything we apply in our skin goes directly into the bloodstream. Yes. People don't know about it. And it's going to it's damaging your cells, it's damaging everything gradually, and you don't know. Now, the people that make all this um the dermatologists that make all these other creams, um dermatologist tested cream that are okay, mm -hmm. they went for it, they have studied for it, they've read for it, they know the exact proportion. Oh, wow. like, I, like I was telling I said it's just like water. We know that water is made up of two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. Yeah. If extra one molecule of hydrogen that is no longer water mm -hmm. but what these people don't know is the exact amount of product to mix together they don't have they don't even have um equipment for measuring them so they, that's why there is no good skincare product that you use that you will get for the next two weeks uh -huh. it's not possible the gradual process and so they just they just mix like some of them mix high quantity of hydroquinone and hydroquinone is, is a hydroquinone is actually a treatment for hyperpigmentation. But you you should not use more than two percent. Okay. And imagine adding as high as twenty percent or fifty percent, your skin will just go from dark to fair in the next three weeks. Okay. Okay. What? Okay. Now, so um, those people, those people who use or who sell the natural organic skincare products, and other people who sell um, the well chemicals, I'll call them chemicals because if you look at the mixture, how how much they have effect on your skin. Even some of these organic products are beginning to toe that line too. You see someone having to sell saying this is pure organic, but then you apply it and you're having some reaction. So what would you say has been put together to to to, to cause that kind of effect? Okay. Like now I watched a video of somebody we have this um they have this car white carotone product from I think it's Kotunu or Ghana, I don't know the country. Some people now, if you're doing pure organic, you can do um you can do like shea butter, you can do like essential oils, you can add like um hyaluronic acid. We have like different things that you can add to do a pure organic organic, let me say body cream or soap. But it will not sell because people don't want that. Girls, especially girls, they want to glow. They want to be fair. I don't know. I don't know why they really want that. So if you if you're selling pure organic, they will not sell. Your market will not sell. So even if these people have a clear conscience of wanting to do the pure organic, just because somebody will and say it did not work for me, they are now being forced to add stuff like um, hydroquinone. That hydroquinone it helps to speed up the chemical reaction in your body that will make your skin to start getting fair. So these are the things that they add. Then they add, you know, there are different chemicals. They, they, they add sulfuric acid. I don't know how. And that sulfuric acid, you don't even, it's even supposed to be processed. They add honey. Do you know that honey is not good for the skin? Unprocessed honey. Because take a look at the way honey is gotten. And they turn it into any kind of container. We have dirt, dirt, we have gems, we have different things. Just because you go online and say that honey is good, it is it's supposed to be processed under a certain amount of heat. Okay. But these people they just everything. And these are the things that spoil the skin. Okay. Um now that we've talked about the challenges, you know, um bedeviling the industry in terms of those who make um, products that are not refined or up to standard. Now let's talk about the commercial aspect of things. Um, how can one start a cosmetics business in terms of, you know, the cost, um, the average cost now, that's um, on, a, on an average scale or a medium scale. How can one start a cosmetics business? Okay. For cosmetic business, it's quite a little bit on the high side. Okay. But there are other ways to go around it. Okay. I could say you can start with as low as 10000 Oh, okay. I Interesting. Yes. And you can start with nothing. Like for me, I have a platform where I just I base on just students and maybe moms that are home mm -hmm. or widows that don't have 
to. So I get products from my store. I take a picture of them. I send it to the platform. Okay. Good product. Then you could just, the, the only thing you'll be needing is your data. Okay. You snap, take the pictures, put them online. Somebody's interested. Like I even have a client, Look, she just called me. She said, I have a client, her face is this, her face is that. What can she use? I will even give you the prescription of what to use. Okay. And then you talk to the customer. And then she said, she's a student. She's in one of these universities here. Yeah. You okay. don't need. But now, if you want to do it on a high scale, cosmetic is really very expensive. Okay. You could go as well. Thousand, one million, even five million naira. Uh, let's put it to the medium scale. You know, for the average Nigerian, not everyone can afford a million or five million, but probably from fifty thousand, hundred thousand, one fifty thousand. I'm talking about fifty thousand naira or a hundred. Yes, you do not need to get a store. Okay. You could make your home a store. Okay. In your offices, you can just say, "Oh, I sell this, I sell that." So you could just go to the market, pick you. That's why you still need to consult somebody that's into the business. Okay. So the person with product that works faster and better on the skin. So when you get those products, you go to the market, you purchase them, just keep them in your house, take a picture, snap them, put them online, and then fifty thousand naira. In fact, twenty thousand naira, you're good to go. Like now, and there are pictures. There are pictures on the internet. You can go. You, you can go to Google. Google pictures post them when somebody wants to buy you go to a store buy them add your little money and you're good to go okay interesting so how lucrative is it yes it's very, everybody wants to everybody wants their skin even right now even guys i have guys calling me oh i want my skin i have uh, i have uh, bonds from shaving everybody wants to look good so okay. it's very it is very very lucrative there is money in it if you know what you're doing Okay. okay, thank you so much for your time on the show, Blessing Kolaoli. Welcome. That was Blessing Kolaoli, the CEO of Sycamore um, Cosmetics there, putting us through the ropes of starting a cosmetics business. We're going to short break now. One return, the show will be hitting home cost. Please to stay with us.